morning, everybody. Welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church and to our digital worship service. We're so glad that you are choosing to join with us in this way and at this time. And it's our prayer that in everything we do in this service, that you, wherever you're joining us from, have a close sense of God's presence with you. And that you come to worship today with a heart and with a mind that are open to the Spirit's leading and guidance. As we get going today, it always helps us whenever you let us know that you've worshipped with us. And so I invite you, either right now or later on today, to go to our church website, mumconline.com forward slash here. When you get there, you're going to find a link to our digital attendance pad. And we invite you to fill that out. Let us know your name. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, you can put those in there. Our prayer team meet every Tuesday. They love to pray, pray over every single one of those prayer requests. The other thing I want to draw your attention to today is that little comment feed that is scrolling beside the screen that you're watching me on. Please take time to greet each other in there, uh, to offer the peace of Christ to one another. And of course, if you have a prayer request that you want to put in there, everybody who's watching will be praying for you in real time as soon as they read it. So please feel free to go ahead and do that. It is a great way to build digital community when we comment and chat back and forth in that feed. So as we begin our time of worship today, this morning, folks, you can see that we are in Maxwell Hall and this space is just filled with light. But we know that when it's dark outside, our hearts tremble just a little bit, even if we're grown-ups. And we know that the light of one simple candle can illuminate a whole big dark room. And that is why every Sunday we light a candle as a reminder to ourselves that Jesus, the light of the world, is with us here and always, and he lights the darkness of our hearts and the, the darkness of the world. So we welcome the light of Christ to join us as we worship. Come, light of Christ, be with us. Fill this space and fill our hearts with your light and your love. And this day I also offer you the peace that passes understanding that only Jesus can offer. May the peace of our Lord be with you this day. Hey Memorial, I'm excited to give you our mission highlight for this month. And really, this month what we're doing is we're looking back at the last two hands-on missions that we had. And so I wanted to give you an update on those because I feel like they were great wins for our church. Uh, the first one that I'm going to let you know about is in June, we did our hands-on mission with the Ark. It is such an amazing opportunity. If you've never been out there, um, it is an amazing opportunity. And the reason that it's such a neat opportunity is because as I was sitting in that room, it just seemed to grow with joy as the day went on. It's just amazing how infectious the joy was in that room. Every time somebody would get a bingo, somebody would be clapping, somebody would be cheering, um, and they loved getting those prizes. We had 19 volunteers show up, and they did everything from cooking to playing bingo to giving out prizes. It was just a, a great day, and so I just wanted to let you know that that was a huge success for us. And they were so they they always say, "So you're coming back next week, week right?" Um, which we are not able. To to, but if that is on your heart to volunteer there, that's why we do hands-on mission projects, is to let you know about the great opportunities that we have in our community and for you to continue to give in those ways. The second one was just last week, we did our teacher drive and it was amazing to see how many items came in. We had 4,959 items came in and those are items, those are not individual pencils, it's a pack of pencils, this is one item. So great job on that. In fact, we had some leftovers that we were able to give to Yuli primary school and to America's youth. And so we did an amazing job. 68 teachers from 20 different schools came out. Um, so our net is getting bigger and bigger. And it's primarily because there isn't really another event for teachers like like that we're offering, um, which is great to see that we're filling a need. And there was two different teachers that came up to me. One said, uh, my room would not be stocked if it wasn't for our church and what we were doing. Another teacher said, I now count on this every year. Um, and for the last three years, I've come to this event and it is a huge help to our classroom. You're making a real impact in teachers' lives. Um, teachers that invest into our kids and are not paid nearly enough, uh, and but they use those funds to help fund their classroom. So great job on that. It's amazing to see what our church is doing through missions and through our hands-on mission projects.
friends, let's join together now as we affirm our faith. The words will be on screen. Please say them at home along with me. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Hi, everybody. In today's sermon, we're going to be hearing from the book of Isaiah. And in the book of Isaiah, we're going to hear how we can leave the past behind. Bad choices, bad decisions that we've made, and we can be new, and we can make great choices and good decisions with the help of God our Father. And we also can think of that when we start a new school year, because we can think about maybe we didn't make all the best choices or good decisions, and then this school year, we can start new, and we can make good decisions. And for that matter, we get a new and lovely day every day when we wake up in the morning and have God in our heart. Will you pray with me? Dear God, Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the Bible. And thank you for always being with us as we can start a new day with new decisions with you. In your son's name we pray, amen. And now we're gonna find out how we can live out our calling memorial with just three things. Y'all, we have two really exciting Sundays coming. Next Sunday, the 20th, we welcome Pastor Rachel and her family to the Memorial family. And then the Sunday after that, the 27th, Florida Conference Bishop Tom Berlin is going to be at Memorial. He is a dynamic preacher, and he'll be preaching at all four of our worship services. And then we hope you'll join us for our next good old-fashioned church potluck that same day. Bring a dish to share and join us for some fellowship with our church family and with Bishop Berlin. As our summer is coming to an end, our music ministry is just heating up, and Dr. Joan has an invitation for you. Attention! Music groups are starting back this week, and I am so excited to get back in a routine here at our church. This is a wonderful time to join a group. Just come in. You don't have to read music. You don't have to be a confident singer. You just want to be a part of a loving community. Now, it's time for a scene change. Christmas is coming. It comes every year and it's one of the highlights of our Christian season. Welcoming a new baby. So please, again, uh, join in for those groups. I'll leave you with... Handbells and Chancel Choir resume rehearsals on Wednesday. It's 4.45 p.m. for the handbells and 6 o'clock p.m. for the choir. Both are in the choir room. And the 8 o'clock ensemble rehearses on Mondays at 1.30 p.m. in the choir room. For more information, contact Dr. Joan or visit mumconline.com slash music. Now, y'all know church directories are a good way to be able to put names with faces to get to know people. They're also a good piece of history because they only come out like every five to eight years and people change a lot. Like, here, look at this. Okay, so my family moved here in 1982. This is the first memorial directory picture I could find with us in it. This was from 1983. That's a little fourth or fifth grade Carrie Mack in the middle. Aw. 
We skip a few years ahead till the next directory, which is 1990. Here I am, a freshman in high school already with my parents. My brother was away at college, and Dad was sporting his Magnum P.I. mustache. Then around 94, 95, while I was in college, I came back for my picture. My mom and I apparently dyed our hair the same color. Then there were three directories that were just kind of not as interesting while I was finishing college and grad school and started a family. And then... 2006, we introduced Steve and baby Maddie to the Memorial family. A few years later, toddler Maddie has finally grown into his big head. And four or five years later, surprise, we have tiny Nola. Steve grew a beard and our dog Baco made an appearance. Now around five years later, Nola's a toddler and that same doggy is an old lady. And then the most recent, new dog, back to my original hair color, and Maddie is still shorter than his parents in this picture. Whew! A lot of change can happen in 40 years. I mean, a lot of change can happen in five years. Look how gray my hair's gotten. Thank you, Nirvana, for helping me find those pictures. Now, we need a new directory. We've had so many new members, and it's time to get a new directory, and maybe you can help. We need some volunteers to help us make this happen. If you're an organized person who might like to be a liaison between the church and the directory company, please let us know. You just need to be able to encourage people to participate, help make appointments, work with a photographer. If this sounds like something you might be able to do, you can just contact the church office. Maddie's a senior and he's going to be off to college soon and we have a second dog now, so I want a new picture. So if you feel called to lead Memorial into a new directory season, please contact the church office and let us know. Welcoming Bishop Berlin to Memorial and enjoying a good old-fashioned church potluck. Leading worship through music and helping us get a new directory. These are just three things that you could do to live your calling through Memorial. Have many ways you can give to the work of Memorial, and you can see these at our website, which is shown here on the screen. I want to thank you for your gifts and your commitment to what God is doing through our church. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are so thankful for all of our very many blessings. We ask that you use what we give in your service. Please bless each of us and continue to allow us to be blessings to others in our community. All of these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Join with me now as we pray together, bringing the needs of our world and our lives before the God who listens. Let us pray. And gracious God, as always, we do thank you for this gift of prayer. We thank you for all the reminders in our lives that you never leave us nor forsake us, that there is nowhere we can go to get away from your presence. Gracious God, you are with us in the good times of our lives and you are with us through the tragedies of our lives. You are with whole communities as they struggle, whatever it is they are going through. And so, in this time of prayer, we do want to bring before you those communities, those parts of our world that we know are experiencing trial and trouble in these days. And so today, Lord, we do pray for the people who are suffering as a result of fires in Hawaii, for those who have had to abandon their homes for those who are struggling to maintain and uh, put those fires out, Lord. For everybody who is impacted by what's going on there, we ask that you would draw close, give strength, bring peace and comfort where it is needed. We continue to cry out on behalf of Ukraine and the people who struggle and who are suffering there. We give thanks for those who are willing to travel to be with them, to serve in communities of great need. We give thanks for our own brother and sister, Chris and Diana Twiggs, who have been there in recent days. Lord God, may their gift of presence have an impact. And Lord, would you continue to be there with those people in their moments of fear and in their moments of loneliness? Lord God, would you draw close and grant your comfort and your peace. We are also aware this week of another shipwreck, a ship filled with refugees, seeking freedom from an oppressed life, seeking a journey to a new and a better life, Lord. 
no victims of weather, of the sea? Would you draw close to those who are experiencing loss after a tragic tragedy like this? And Lord God, would you lead and guide us in the world so that we would welcome the stranger in better ways, so that those who seek refuge would always find it. Show us what it is to offer your welcome to those who seek it. We continue to pray for our young sister, Mary, asking again that you continue to be with her and with her family in these hard, hard days. Draw close to them, Lord. Give them moments of, of joy, and laughter together and bring comfort in her moments of pain. And the questions that they have, Lord God, draw close and grant them your wisdom and your grace. In fact, we pray for all of those in our congregation and in our community who at this time are lonely or who are under a cloud of depression. For those who are bereaved, Lord God, Grieving the loss of a loved one, draw close and grant them your grace and your mercy. For those who are sick in these days, who are battling illness or injury, Lord, would you be with them? Would you ease pain where that is possible? And would you, again, we pray, bring your comfort. We continue to pray for our schools, starting back for another year. Lord God, bless children as they show up, bless teachers, administrators, school staff as they go about their work each day. And for those students who are getting ready to either go to college for the first time or to return to college this year, again, Lord, our prayer is simple. Be with them, keep them safe, and be with them in their journey of learning. Gracious God, all of these prayers we bring before you now. In the name of Jesus, who taught us that when we pray, we ought to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture lesson comes from Isaiah 43, 16 through 19. Through the word of God. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior? They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. It's now Pastor Charlie here, it's Pastor Alice, and I wanna welcome you once again to this time of worship together. Please keep our pastor in prayer as he's traveled to Ireland to be with his mom uh, and his family as uh, they, they just comfort her uh, as she enters these last days uh, here on this earth. And now I want to say thank you to Jessica for reading our scripture for us this morning. It's from uh, the prophet Isaiah. And so let us begin our time of this message and I ask that you would pray with me. Lord, I just ask your presence to be with, with all of us this morning. Uh, Lord, that ears be opened and eyes be opened, and Lord, empty me of any thoughts of self that you might be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, last week, the Reverend Haley Eccles was here from CCW and gave us a word from God that was focused on transitions and change 
And that was just a great segue uh, for the scripture that God gave me for today's message. You've heard it said, friends, that you can count on two things in life, death and taxes. Well, I'd like to suggest there's a third, and it's change. Change, you can count on change happening. We're going to delve into the scripture we just heard from the prophet Isaiah and explore what it means for us as Jesus followers to embrace in this earthly life change as continual, change as in times of transition, change for letting go, forgetting, and welcoming new beginnings. It's been my experience that one of the paradoxes of God is that while God is unchanging, God is always doing a new thing in us, closing and opening doors and calling us to move out of our comfort zones and into new beginnings and new seasons of life and ministry. My own life has been one of many changes beginning very early in my childhood. As a child of a career military father, I went to seven different schools from age seven to 10 and six different locations from Florida, New York, Maine, California, and then to the Philippines. My mother helped us move through these transitions and changes by telling us we were off to a new adventure. But in just three years, I have to tell you, it's hard to leave friends and three beloved pets behind. It was very hard. The first was my dog, Troubles, replaced by my beloved parakeet, Charlie, who was replaced by my cowardly cat with the very brave name, Dreadnought. My Brownie Scout leader taught us the song, make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other gold. Well, nowadays, most of my friends are of the silver variety, as am I. But don't feel sorry for me, please. My childhood was an education on dealing with change that you cannot get in a book. Hard as the changes might be, you can't escape them. But if you can let it go, as the song from the movie Frozen says, and put your hand in the hand of the Holy Spirit who you can see and embrace change differently. And when you can see God's hand in some of those changes, you can have a whole really different way of looking at change, especially the changes you didn't ask for and you didn't want. The context for the prophet Isaiah's message to the people of Judah is helping them to look to the past and remember God's faithfulness. Even as they are being warned to expect exile to be followed by restoration to their homeland. How can you be hopeful though, knowing you're about to be evicted from your home transported against your will to a strange place with lots of unknowns, and who knows when this promised homecoming is going to happen. After all, the Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness before entering the promised land, and that didn't happen easily either. That had to have been a lot to process and to try to understand, much less accept. But Isaiah reminds the people of God's faithfulness to part the seas and destroy Pharaoh's indomitable army to make a way for them to enter, no, not the promised land, but the wilderness. My goodness. Though There were those among them at that time who really wanted to return to slavery in Egypt, to the familiar, albeit the oppressive past. Isaiah reminds them to not cling to what was left behind, but to look forward to seeing the new thing that God was about to do. Just as a way was found for them through the parted reed sea into the wilderness of Sinai, just as water was found there, even from a rock, 
and this mysterious manna came down from heaven to feed their forebears, this new generation is about to be exiled, will not be forsaken either. God will make a new path for them and bring forth streams of water from the desert to quench their spiritual thirst as they face the new challenges before them. And yes, Isaiah's prophecy from God happened just as he said it would. After a period of exile, they did return home to rebuild. Now you need to know too that Isaiah is one of the most quoted Old Testament prophecies uh, from the Bible, and it's quoted by theologians and preachers as prophecy of Jesus' coming, the promise of the Messiah. And these streams in the desert Isaiah mentions, why they're symbolic of the living water that Jesus offers and is that quenches our spiritual thirst. But I digress. We'll hear more from Isaiah, I'm sure, as we move into Advent, not too many months away now. We here at Memorial may not be facing the kinds of challenges that eviction, exile, and captivity are, and that the people of Israel were facing so long ago, but neither are we strangers to change. Your pastors know that some of you are coping with many different changes in your lives. Some of you are grieving the loss of loved ones. Some have just relocated here to begin a new life. Some are becoming empty nesters with the mixed feelings that comes along with that reality. And some of you are dealing with health issues. Some are minor, some are major. Some of you have financial problems and some are struggling with either new jobs or maybe difficult family relationships. Our own beloved Pastor Charlie is dealing with some of these changes too. You see, change is all around us and it never ends. And as a church family, we are in the throes of leaving behind the familiar to embrace the new things that God is going to be doing. Excitement is coupled with a little bit of wondering as we anticipate the changes on the horizon for our new pastor, as our new pastor Rachel joins us next Sunday. As each of us cope in our own way, with our personal challenges and change. We, as we encounter this new change within our church family, we will be longing for the familiar, the comforts of what once was, and will we open our minds and hearts to God's movement? Or will we do the opposite? Can we trust God with the outcomes in our personal lives even if they're not what we anticipated, preferred, we can't predict what tomorrow might bring. And our own reactions to change can sometimes surprise us or even scare us. What are we to do? How are we to cope? And here's where Isaiah's message for us has a personal message for us individually and as a church family. What is tried and true and unchanging is God, the faithful one who provides what we need for the day we need it, the one who parts the seas, bring forth springs in the desert, and the one who makes a way where there was no way before. It's good to take comfort in knowing that even as change as is inevitable, what's new soon be can become familiar and comfortable, even though it might be a little uncomfortable at the start. But of course, there's that in-between time, the letting go of what we cannot change time, and trusting God will see us through Till the next new change is before us. This is when and where the family of God is at its best. 
I can't even tell you how many new members Memorial has brought into our family just since I've been with Memorial. But each one has found their place here and in our hearts. Our familiar times of worship together, fellowship, celebrations, prayer times, mission work and community service together where love shows up helps us weather the temporary transitions of the storms that change, of change can bring. But let's be real too, shall we? If you're one who has a hard time letting go, a hard time saying goodbye, a hard time accepting change, you are not alone. Sometimes I think life is but a season of endless grieving what's lost and celebrating what's new. And when we're in one of those blue funks, as my sweet mother-in-law used to call them, that's the time to step away from your own misery to comfort the one that God will put in your path who's going through the same thing. Friends, pray to be needed. Let me say that again. Pray to be needed. I promise you that God will answer that prayer. Sometimes the loss of something or someone who was so well loved and gave our lives meaning and purpose makes moving forward seem impossible. Clinging to the past, past and condemning ourselves for doing what we didn't want to do, not doing what we knew we should do, thinking about all the things that were left unsaid or un undone or regretted. Self-condemnation and trying to hold on to what cannot be restored is why God says in this scripture, do not remember the former things nor consider the old things. Instead, God reminded the Israelites then and us now in this scripture to remember what God has done and place our hopes in what God will do. Letting go of the past might seem impossible for us, but for God, nothing is impossible. Just as my mother would say, we're embarking on a new adventure, so does God. Now we can treasure in our hearts the good of what we loved in the past, but God would have us forgive ourselves and others and forget our failures or whatever regret, regrets we might have. In this way, we can move from seeing only our inner laments to seeing outside ourselves and allowing for light to break into our own personal darkness. As a child, both God and my mom helped me and allowed me uh, to accept each new pet and friend and to find their own places in my heart. And I will tell you, loving and caring for them ease the pain of loss too. Similarly, we can ask God to place in our lives new meaning and purpose through the new thing God wants to do in, in us and for us and through us. And if we ask and allow God to lead and help us, we will find it easier to go, let go of that past, those regrets, and open ourselves up to any new spiritual or ministry adventure that God has in store for us. That can be true, but it also might be true that we must let go of our expectations to make room for the new thing God wants to do. You see, when we let go of something that we loved, our expectations can often be that that will be a replacement. God will replace what we have lost. No, God wants to do a new thing and have us embrace that new thing that maybe has nothing to do with our own expectations. And friends, as we welcome our new pastor, my hope is that we are indeed opening ourselves up for a new adventure in ministry. 
I can't wait to see what gifts and graces she will bring to enrich our spiritual lives. Just as we have opened our hearts to every new member who has joined this memorial family, this grace-filled family, we can open our hearts and minds to Pastor Rachel and her family and the new thing God is doing in her, for her, and with us together. Don't we all wish from time to time that we could look in the mirror and see a younger face, a trimmer body, our children as the cute little three and four year olds that they once were? Don't we all wish we could just transport ourselves back in time to those favorite special moments with friends and family and have a Groundhog Day to live over and over? Of course we do, but we know we cannot turn back the clock. Just as God had the people of Judah look back, but only to remember God's faithfulness to them and forget the things of old, God would have us look back to remember what God has done for you, what God has done for me, and to look forward to the new thing that God is going to do. It's always time for a new adventure with God, no matter where that adventure may lead. Let's all lean on one another as we follow Jesus to see where he wants love to show up next, shall we? The winds of change wrought by the Holy Spirit will always bring us safely home no matter where we go. Please pray with me. God, it seems that change is never ending and when we really think about it, we know it's true, but it's hard, Lord. So we ask that your spirit would help us that you would order our thoughts, that you would calm our fears, that you would help us to let go of what we cannot have again and embrace the new thing, the new thing that you will provide for us, the new thing that you want us to do for you, the new thing that will make life better for us and for those around us. Help us, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Amen. And now I'd like you to turn your eyes to the screen. You're going to see there are three questions. God just loves the number three. You'll see three questions for you to ponder as you reflect on today's message. I wish you well. As you leave this worship time together, may you remember that God is always with you. God delights in doing a new thing in you. God wants you to have joy and peace. So go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in that perfect peace.